Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. We have to learn how to do what's right while it still feels wrong. We have to learn to do what's right when we're hurting so bad that we feel like everything in us is just going to cave in. And you may have to do what's right for a long, 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 long time before you ever get a right result. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you and say, pray a prayer and tomorrow you'll have it. It might happen that way, but it probably won't. But I can tell you this, whatever you really need, God will get it for you. He'll give it to you. And if you keep the vision and the dream in front of you, it'll not be behindhand. It'll not be late on its appointed day. I don't know when that is, but God does, and His timing is perfect in our lives. And in the meantime, don't make the mistake that I made and be miserable trying to make it happen yourself. Enjoy your life. Enjoy where you're at on the way to where you're going. If you want to give the devil a nervous breakdown, get up every day and be just as happy as you can possibly be. I mean, enjoy your journey. Love God. And you just need to say out loud every day, God, I'm waiting on my vision to come to pass. But you know what, God, if I never get it, I'm still wildly in love with you. I can be just as happy if you do it or if you don't do it. I only want you to do it if it's right. Oh, glory. I might get excited and feel like running the building or something. I don't know. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I'm sure people thought, well, who is he? We never heard of him. Well, isn't he just the carpenter's son? Who is that? When my ministry first started getting popular and I was invited to a couple of bigger conferences like this to be a guest speaker, People would say, well, where did you come from? We never heard of you. And I used to think, well, I've been somewhere. But where I've been, you wouldn't have wanted to have been there. You know, my public ministry now is a result of the private life, what I have done in private over these 35 years, and what I still do every day of my life. Don't think that you can be one thing in the public and something else in the private. If you begin to live your life right, I mean really right, keeping your attitude right, learning how to be careful about your words, keeping your mind right with God, guarding your heart, don't having any bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness, being a loving person who reaches out to other people. It's not hard. God makes it very plain what He wants us to do, and He gives us the grace, the strength, the power, the ability to do it. And He's... <laughs> and yes, God wants you to have your dreams and visions fulfilled, but that is not His number one priority in your life. More than He wants to give you what you want, he wants to make you what He wants you to be. I'm sure they thought, well, where did He come from? Well, He'd been growing. For 30 years, for a three-year ministry. But those three years were so powerful by the time God released Him, that it's still affecting people worldwide every single day. Hallelujah. Nobody knew who Jesus was when he first came on the scene, but when you say the name of Jesus now. Wow. He grew. Hebrews 5, verse 8. Although he was a son, he learned active special obedience through what he suffered. And his completed experience, everybody say experience. experience. 
making him perfectly equipped, say equipment, he became the author and the source of eternal salvation to all those who give heed to and obey him. The things that he went through from the day he was eight days old until he was 12 years old, and then he, what he went through from the time he was 12 years old to the time he was 30 years old, that God only describes as growing. God doesn't have to tell us everything. And we don't need to tell everybody else everything. Some of the things you go through when you're growing are just not the kind of things you can tell people. It's something you got to just bear down and give birth with you and God alone. Let me tell you something. When a woman's given birth, she don't want nobody in the room unless they know her very well because she's likely to not act too good. You got your birth coach there, the Holy Spirit, saying, push! See, a lot of people want to go out and do some big thing, but they don't have any experience, they don't have any equipment. You know, if I have to call a plumber to my house, I prefer to have one with experience. I don't want somebody that just wants to practice on my pipes. I want somebody with equipment. What if he came and he had no equipment? He said to me, well, do you have the equipment I need to fix your pipes? I don't have any experience, I don't have any equipment, but here I am. Well, I wouldn't want anything to do with that. And we need to get experience. And we need to get equipment. Now, I'm going to tell you something you don't want to hear. You don't get experience in the good times in your life. You get experience in the hard times. You don't get equipment in the good times of your life. You get equipment in the hard times. You don't have anything to give anybody else if it's just your bright idea. You've got to have some experience. When I share with you, I'm not only sharing the Word of God with you, but I'm sharing my life with you. I know that God is real, and I know what He can do in your life. And I know that even when He is silent, He is still working. Let me tell you something, when you feel like God is doing nothing, that's probably when He's doing the most. And instead of saying, God, why aren't you doing something in my life I don't understand? I don't think I can hang on much longer. I think I'm just going to quit. You need to open your mouth and say out loud and just make the devil as mad as you can. God, I don't care what I feel like. I believe that you're working. What you say with your mouth during these silent years is much more important than what you might want to think. Don't say things like, well, this is not doing any good at all. I'm just wasting my time. Nothing's changing. I'm not changing. Nobody cares anyway. Nothing good ever happens to me. Doors never open for me. Nobody appreciates me. Everybody gets a breakthrough but me. You'll just keep going around and around the same dumb mountains all your life, murmuring, grumbling, being confused. Call those things that be not as though they are. Moses was hidden for the first three years, three months of his life. And then just about when he thought he was ready to just step out into his ministry and deliver the Israelites, he got sent to the backside of the desert for 40 years. Everybody forgot who he was. They didn't care that he used to be a son of Pharaoh. Nobody thought about Moses anymore. Nobody talked about Moses. Nobody cared where he was. Nobody went to look for him. But God knew where he was. And when the time was right, God appeared to him in a burning bush and used him. What happened to him on the backside of nowhere? I don't know. You know, the Bible doesn't bother to tell us. He grew. He just grew. And then John the Baptist, let's, let's look at Luke chapter 1, verse 76. This is so amazing to me when I actually start looking at the lives of these people. 
It didn't take me too long to figure out what was going on with me when I really started studying the Bible. And then you have to make your mind up if you're up for it or not. <laughs> Thank you, I'll go over here now. I mean, come on, do you really want to be used by God? I mean, do you really want to be used by God? <laughs> I mean, really, like, for sure, do you want to get the equipment? Do you want to get the experience? No wonder when the mother of those two boys came to Jesus and said, I want my sons to sit with you when you come into your kingdom, one on your right hand and one on your left. Jesus said, lady, you do not know what you're asking for. <laughs> John the Baptist. Luke chapter 1, verse 76. And you, little ones, shall be called a prophet of the Most High. For you shall go on before the face of the Lord and make ready His ways. To bring and to give the knowledge of salvation to His people. In the forgiveness and the remission of their sins. Because of and through the heart of tender mercy and loving kindness of our God, a light from on high will shine down upon us and visit us to shine upon and give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to direct and guide our feet in a straight line in the way of peace. What an awesome prophecy over his life. And you, little ones, shall be used as the forerunner for the Messiah. You shall go ahead of him and declare that he's coming. Verse 80, and the little boy grew. And he became strong in spirit. And he was in the desert, the wilderness. <laughs> I tell you, God seems to have some kind of a thing with the wilderness. <laughs> Everybody that he's going to use has to go there. And he was sent to the wilderness, the desert, from that day. And it doesn't sound to me like he was very old until the day he came out screaming like a madman, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. I don't know exactly what happened to him out there while he was dressing in camel's hair and eating locusts. Doesn't sound too inviting to me. But something happened Something prepared him to not care what anybody thought. Come on, some of you can't be used by God because you're still too caught up in what everybody thinks of you. And so you know what's going to happen? People are going to keep thinking stuff and saying stuff that's going to hurt you and wound you until you get to the point where you just don't care. Come on. If you think everybody's going to love you just because you want to serve God, you better think again. They hated him without a cause. <laughs> you can't be used by God if you are overly concerned about what people think. If you're a people pleaser and, and you do everything to be seen of men and you're always getting offended and hurt and wounded. So how are you going to get over that experience? <laughs> gives you some new equipment I don't know what all John the Baptist went through out there but I see an amazing thing in John chapter 3 if we can look there for just a minute there was some character development going on out there and see the thing is, is he was quite alone and sometimes when you're the loneliest is when God can do the greatest work I don't know what all happened to John the Baptist out there, but I mean, he got some character in John chapter 3, verse 
25, then there arose a controversy between some of John's disciples and a Jew in regard to purification. So they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, at the Jordan crossing, and the one to whom you yourself have borne testimony saying, you know, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the wind, sin of the world. He's out there baptizing and now, John, everybody's flocking to him. John, you're about to lose your disciples. You better do something. He's taking your place. Now everybody's running to him. John didn't even have to think about it. Look at his answer. A man can receive nothing. He can claim nothing. He can take unto himself nothing except as it has been granted unto him from heaven. A man must be content to receive the gift which is given to him from heaven. There's no other source. Verse 30, verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. He must grow more prominent, and I must become less prominent. God sent me to do something, I've done it, now he's coming to take over, and I wouldn't get in his way for anything. I don't have to be first, all I've got to be is in God's will. You got to know how to do what God wants you to do when it's time to do it, and how to stop if it's ever time to stop. Silent years. Jesus had them. John the Baptist had them. Moses had them. Joseph, 13 years in prison for something he didn't do, but went straight from the prison to the palace. Well, Joyce, you talk about silent years, I feel like I've had a silent life. <laughs> when, when is something going to happen to me? I can't tell you exactly when, but I can tell you this, it'll probably happen suddenly. Just like suddenly Jesus showed up, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Suddenly. Moses saw a burning bush, and God called him to bring the Israelites out with miracles and powers and parting the Red Sea and all those kind of manna-type miracle great things, goody, wonderful, made up for the wilderness stuff. I bet when he held that rod out over the Red Sea and it went he thought, I'm so glad I got my equipment. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I got my experience. And I just wish that I could tell you how glad I am that I've been through what I've been through. And I hated it all, but oh my gosh, now I am so glad that I went through it. And I wish I could help you to get glad about what you're going through. I wish you could embrace it a little better than I did, because if you would, maybe it wouldn't take you quite as long to get through it as it did me. Don't quit and don't give up. Every day of your life when you get up, you say, something good's gonna happen to me today. I've got a suddenly coming in my life today. Suddenly, God is gonna break through. If today is the right time, then today will be the day that I will get a breakthrough in my life. But I'm not gonna quit. And I'm not gonna give up. He grew. Paul was hidden. He wasn't a very good character when God called him. You know, I wasn't a very good character. I was not a very good candidate. That's why my friends just did, couldn't get it. And I really can't blame them for thinking what they did. Because I wasn't very usable material. I mean, they told me, you got the wrong personality. You got the wrong voice. You got a bad attitude. You don't have enough education. And they were right. But God anointed me. I mean, if he can use the jawbone of a donkey. Come on, are you with me? I mean, Moses just had a rod. God said, what's that you got in your hand? Oh, it's just my rod. Throw it down. 
God filled it full of power. Pick it up. See, if you're willing to throw down everything you've got, then God can fill it full of power and He'll let you pick it back up. I had an unusual voice that didn't sound like most women's voices, and I didn't like my voice. I was paranoid about it. God said, what do you got? A mouth. Throw it down. He filled it full of power, and now people have to listen to it every day all over the world. God's got an amazing sense of humor. You know, God likes to do things in secret. Let's take a look at Psalm 139, and you'll get the point. Suddenly, Paul and Silas were in jail, singing songs, and at midnight, suddenly, the woman with the issue of blood, bled for 18 years, been to every doctor, and suddenly, blind Bartimaeus had a suddenly. And you'll have a suddenly too. It may be tonight, it may be tomorrow. You'll go to bed with the same problem you've had for 20 years and tomorrow, suddenly. Suddenly. And that's what you got to keep your eyes on. Verse 13, for you did form my inward parts, you did knit me together in my mother's womb. I will confess and praise you for you are fearful and wonderful and for the awful wonder of my birth. Wonderful are your works and that my inner self knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret. Now you know what? The whole growth of a baby thing is so amazing. I just wonder why God didn't work it out to where when a woman gets pregnant she has this little clear sack on the outside so we could all just watch. Wouldn't that be cool if we could just watch all that? But oh no, God does it in secret. In the regions of mystery, in darkness, He puts His hand in there and He forms us and shapes us. And the Bible says every day of our life is written down before even one of them exists. You don't know what God's doing right now in you, in the region of mystery, in the darkness that you might be feeling right now, but I can tell you God is working and the birth will come. And I might add, the worst pain is right before you get the biggest breakthrough. Hallelujah. Exodus 33, Moses wanted to see God. I want to see you, Lord. And he said, no man can see my face and live. And God said, I will make all of my goodness pass before you. You ought to hang on to that one. <laughs> and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, before you, for I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy and loving kindness to whom I will show mercy and loving kindness. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place beside me, and you shall stand upon the rock. Jesus is called the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Now, what in the world does that mean? I believe that God gave me understanding about this scripture about 15 years ago. And this is what it is. I'm the believer, and I'm in my silent years. I tell you, I need to see God so bad. I need to hear from God so bad. Nothing's happened, nothing's happened, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. I'm going to church. I'm singing the happy, clappy songs and jumping up and down. <laughs> nothing's happening. I'm at home in my bed crying, and nothing's happening. Well, while I'm here going through this mess, little do I know that God is coming. Now, just, just wait a minute. <laughs> 
God is coming. I don't know it, but God's coming. He said, you can't see my face, but I will hide you in Jesus the rock. You won't see my face, but after I've passed by, my hand shall be moved and you will see my backside. So here's what I got out of it. You may be in the biggest mess that you've ever been in in your life, and you can't always see God coming, but honey, let me tell you, you sure know when he's been there. Amen? And what'll happen? You might go to bed crying tonight, and God is on his way. And tomorrow morning, you'll be saying, that was God, that was God, that was God in my life. Well, I pray that today's teaching has inspired you to keep your goals in front of you, but also to wait on God to do what only He can do in your life.